Hi, welcome to our video series on infectious disease precautions. In this video series, we'll take a look at the differences between contact, droplet, and airborne precautions. Now we're going to start with an easy question. What are precautions in healthcare? If you had to come up with a definition, how would you describe them? Well, precautions are very specific procedures. The goal is to prevent the transmission of infectious microorganisms. Think of it like these three circles that you see on your screen. There's contact, droplet, and airborne. Now it can be very difficult to maintain the airborne precautions that requires extra special equipment, but we'll get to more of that later. Keep in mind these precautions are transmission based. That means if a disease is passed by contact, then we use contact precautions. If it's passed by droplets, that's why we use droplet precautions. I know you're getting the idea as we go through this. So when we use those names, contact, droplet, and airborne, that just refers to the way the diseases we're trying to prevent from spreading normally spread. Are you ready for another question? Let's look at what's the difference between universal or standard precautions and transmission precautions. All right, so on the screen you see a picture of transmission precautions. How are these different than universal or standard precautions? Well, let's walk through what universal or standard precautions are. Universal or standard precautions are the basic level of precautions that are the minimum standard for all patients. So anyone who's being taken care of, these are four really important points that all of us follow when you follow universal or standard precautions. The idea is we want to reduce the risk of transmission of microorganisms while you're taking care of the patient. That means from the patient to me as the healthcare provider, from me as the healthcare provider to the patient, and to other patients. So first up, it's under all precautions, is hand hygiene. Everyone has to practice good hand hygiene. You want to have clean hands when you walk into the room and you also want to wash your hands after you're taking care of the patient. The second one is respiratory hygiene or cough etiquette. That means you want to be careful about where you're coughing. So if we teach little kids want to go and do germs with the five-year-olds, which is one of my favorite things to do with student nurses, we teach them to cough into their elbows so they end up covering that. That's cough etiquette. They can also use a Kleenex or a tissue when they're going to cough. So first up, hand hygiene, that's for everybody. Respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette is the second category. The third one is personal protective equipment. Now as healthcare providers, anytime we run the risk of exposing ourselves to patient body fluids, you want to make sure that you have gloves on. Now we'll talk about more in detail with the specific transmission protocols, what extra PPE you'll need to wear. But Standard universal precautions require that everyone should wear gloves when interacting and caring for a patient when you might be exposed to body fluids. So we've got hand hygiene, respiratory and cough etiquette, personal protective equipment or PPE, and the last one is be careful with the sharps. Sharps need to be safely disposed of in an official sharps container. Now you look at the one that we have on the screen there, you see what it's got? That's a needle heading in for disposal. You don't ever want to recap your needle unless it's a very specialized safety cap. But don't pick a cap up and take your hypodermic and put them back on. You really risk sticking yourself because sometimes that needle will go back through the cap if you recap a needle. So you want to dispose of that sharp right into a sharps container. Now they have a special lid that you can see on the side there. When it's full or not completely full, about three quarters full, you slide that lid over and change it out for a new one. So that's universal or standard precautions in a nutshell. Hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, and cough etiquette, personal protective equipment, which for now is going to mainly be gloves, and the fourth one is disposing of sharps safely. So as we've already introduced to you, transmission precautions are specific to how the disease spreads. Now we'll look at these and break them down, but before we go through these individually, look at the top, the first box on every one of these posters. What's the common denominator? Right, clean hands. It's amazing how well we can stop the transmission of diseases as everyone was diligent about hand hygiene. So that's why it's a part of standard and universal 
contact, droplet, and airborne precautions. Now let's take a look at contact precautions. Now this one is kind of the most straightforward. We already talked about hand hygiene, but you'll see the two stop signs on the side of each side of this poster that says stop. Everyone has to clean their hands before they go in the room and when they're leaving the room. Now, if you're going to be providing care as a staff member or a healthcare provider, you're also going to need to put on gloves before you go in the room and take the gloves off before you leave the room. So think about the, all the germs that are in the room when someone's on contact precautions. So you want to go in there with gloves on so you're protected and you don't want to carry any of those germs out of the room. So you take them off before you leave the room. Now the gown, same deal. You want to put it on before you go in the room, but take the gown off in the room and throw it away. Remember, you don't want to wear the same gown or gloves for the care of more than one person. Ew, that's disgusting. So gloves and gown, you put them on before you go in the room, you take them off and throw them away before you leave the room. Now, when it comes to equipment, you don't want to share equipment with this patient and other patients if they're on contact precautions. So you want to use dedicated equipment or disposable equipment. That means this blood pressure cuff stays in this room. Nobody else uses it. Or you use disposable equipment and use it once and you throw it away or just use it for that patient and then it's thrown away. If it's reusable equipment, you have to be meticulous about cleaning it and disinfecting it according to your hospital's policy and directions before you would ever use it on another patient. Okay, so that's contact precautions, right? We know hand hygiene is gonna be the same for everybody. Clean your hands before you enter and when you leave the room. Put your stuff on, your gown and gloves, before you go in. And then take it off in the room so you don't carry those bugs back out. Make sure you don't expose another patient to equipment that's been used on a patient with contact precautions. Either use dedicated or disposable. Or if it's reusable, make sure you are meticulous about cleaning it before you use it on another patient. Now, droplet precautions. There we go. You've got hand hygiene. I know you're going to get tired of me saying that, but that's critically important. The worst job I ever had in doing quality was they made me stand in the hallway and note how often staff was using hand hygiene and I could not believe it. So we can't ever get apathetic or get too comfortable and get lax on washing hands. You've got to do it for yourself, for the safety of your family, and particularly for the safety of your patients. But droplet precautions are a little different. You want to make sure that the eyes, nose, and mouth are covered before you go in the room. Because these are droplets, I don't, I want my face protected. So I want to make sure my eyes, nose, and mouth, which were points where droplets could enter my body, I want to make sure that those are protected from the patient's droplets. So you want to make sure that's on before you go in the room and you take it off as you leave the room. So just like with gloves and gown, put it on to protect yourself before you go in the room. Take it off before you leave the room so you don't carry those germs out to the rest of the unit, patients, and staff. All right, so we've looked at contact precautions and droplet precautions. Now, what can you remember is different for droplet precautions versus contact precautions? Right, good. Droplet precautions don't necessarily need a glove and gown, but you must use things that cover your eyes, nose, and mouth, and that's why you're going to have an eye shield or goggles and a mask. Airborne precautions is our third and final category of transmission precautions today. Now everyone has to, I know, I know, wash your hands, you got it, before entering and when leaving the room. But here's where it gets really interesting. Because we're on airborne precautions, we're talking about those bacteria and virus that can hang out in the air. So you need to wear a fit tested N95 or higher level respirator. Now there's a difference in the mask and there's a difference when you take it off. Let's look at that. In airborne precautions, we've got these bacteria and virus literally in the air. So you need a special mask that's called a respirator that fits very tight to your face. 
it filters out about 95% of the things that we're trying to protect you from. So it's a pretty good and effective mask, much better for airborne precautions where a surgical mask would not provide you that type of protection. So, but look at when you take this off. Now, the other stuff, we took it off in the room and threw it away. With airborne precautions, in order for you to be safe, you put this respirator on before you go in the room. Now, it's been fit tested before you even start taking care of a patient. These are fit tested in another part of the hospital to make sure yours fits correctly. You put that on before you go into the room. Then as you're leaving the room, you don't take that off because you don't want to be unprotected. You leave that mask on, exit the room, close the door, then it's safe for you to take the respirator off. So that's why I've got that at the bottom for you. The door to the room after you close it needs to remain closed because that patient inside there has these bacteria or virus that are in the air of their room. You want to keep that door closed so those bugs and bacteria don't come out into the other patient care areas. All right, so there's our three, contact, droplet, and airborne. Take a minute and make sure you're very clear on the similarities and differences between these three types of transmission precautions. Now let's wrap up this video series on precautions. Precautions are specific procedures that are intended to minimize the risk of transmitting infectious organisms. Standard precautions are a minimum set of procedures to be used with all patients, and you may hear them referred to as standard precautions or universal precautions. Transmission precautions include contact, droplet, and airborne, and they're named that way because they're based on how the specific disease is transmitted. Thank you for watching our video today.